Are you looking to get Android Auto on your new touring Harley-Davidson model with that big 12.3 inch Skyline OS? Well, unfortunately, Android Auto is not supported by Harley-Davidson with this OS. Now, whether it's Google's fault or Harley's fault, we've been debating that since the bikes came out. And frankly, I really don't know where the issue is. But I do know motorcycles that are updating their infotainment systems are not supporting Android Auto. But many manufacturers have not updated their infotainment system. So for example, the current Goldwing still support Android Auto because they haven't updated their infotainment system. But if the manufacturer has gone forward with a new infotainment system, we're not seeing Android Auto supported anymore on a motorcycle. Very unfortunate. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I've been playing with uh, adapter boxes that plug into the USB connection on the bike and they present Android Auto through wired CarPlay. So if you look around, you'll find all these boxes. They refer to themselves as AI boxes, uh, but they convert wired uh, CarPlay to wireless CarPlay and or Android Auto. And this is the key. Many of these adapters will convert wired CarPlay to wireless CarPlay. So for example, the older uh, Goldwings only support CarPlay wired. And on some of the boom infotainment systems, right, you could only get wired CarPlay. So these adapters are designed to convert wired CarPlay to wireless. But there's a segment of these boxes that then also support wireless Android Auto. So we can uh, use the box to take the wired CarPlay on our new Harley Davidsons, but then offer Android Auto on the screen. I've tested many of these boxes. I've gone through quite a few different models and I have had good luck with a brand called Anunse. So these boxes are designed on the Android OS version 10 which has been the key for this new Skyline infotainment system. As long as the box is built on Android OS version 10, it seems to boot up and display correctly on these new Harley Davidsons. However, Anunse came out with a new version and it is the Z3. It's much smaller than the previous models. It has a USB-C port and then a pass-through port for a micro SD card. But this little box is built on the Android OS version 12. And to my surprise, it actually booted up on my 23 and a half CVO and displays correctly. Now one key, I do have my bike on the current Skyline OS. So I'm on 4125D for the Skyline version. But you're gonna wanna check your Skyline version because I'm not so sure this will display on the older version of the Skyline OS. And if you need to update, I got plenty of videos on how to do that. You can check your software version by going to the menu button up to the gear and go down to system and then down to system info and then product information. Here you'll see your Skyline OS version and you can see I'm on 4125D. So the latest offering from Anunse is a lot smaller. It's quite a bit smaller than the Z6 and even smaller than the CA1. It's thinner a little bit, but significantly smaller in size. It's built with an aluminum frame around it and then it's uh, I think a polycarbonate plastic on both sides. Uh, so it's a lot smaller, but it also has more horsepower and the latest OS version on it than the CA01 that has been my favorite. So I've used the CA01 forever and it works really well. The Z6 is still the most powerful box. It has uh, an HDMI output that you really wouldn't need on the bike, but it does have a pass-through USB-A. The CA box also has that pass-through USB-A, but the new Z3 does not. So there's no pass-through USB. So if you're using this pass-through port for a headset adapter or you're attempting to charge your phone, this new one won't work for you. However, I will say these USB-A ports on these boxes support less than an amp of output for power. 
So while your phone will indicate it's charging, as you ride using Android Auto, it's not enough amperage to keep your phone alive. So it may extend the life of your battery of your phone for a little while. It's not gonna keep your phone charged on a long ride. Let's take a look at the specs of each box and what differentiates them between each other. So first off, the original CA01. This is the one I featured in my very first video about these boxes. So this guy comes with Android OS version 10. It's got a quad core A53 at one and a half gigahertz. It's got two gigs of memory and then 16 gigs of storage, which is really not that important. Uh, it does support that USB port. So you can charge your phone again at less than one amp. So not that useful, but you can use this box for wired Android Auto. So if you connect a cable from the USB-A of the box to your phone, it'll support wired Android Auto, which is a very reliable connection. It's a little messy because you have an extra cable connected, but it's very reliable. So that is a bonus of this original CA box. Um, and then of course you can use the USB uh, drive for a media file as well. So if you have a thumb drive, with a bunch of downloaded music, you could put that in the USB-A and continue on with downloaded music. Now the Z3 is Android OS version 12. So again, I know it works on my bike with Skyline OS 4125D. It does have a faster processor. So it's that same quad core A53, but it's at 1.8 gigahertz, which does make this box faster. It is noticeably faster. It has a micro SD uh, card slot, but no USB-A port. So what that means is you could take a micro SD card and put music on it and then put that in the box and then it would read it and you could play the music off the micro SD card. So you could have, again, downloaded music while you're writing, just playing through the box, nothing streaming from your phone. Finally, we have the Z6. So I have featured this on my channel as well. It's a much bigger box, more complex. One of the big differences of this box is that it has built-in GPS. So what that means is you could use this box with your bike and not pair your phone to it at all and open up Google Maps and it would navigate using the GPS built into this box. So if you don't want Android Auto, but you just want the Android interface or this box's interface, you could do that. I really don't see a big purpose for that, right? I think the intent here is to get your Android Auto on the screen. So just using the box itself doesn't really uh, make sense to me, but it does have built-in GPS. It does have that USB-A port, same limitations as the CA01 box. Uh, it does have more room for built-in apps and you can download apps of the box. So in theory, you could try to make this box work all by itself, load the apps that you're interested in. It has GPS, but it doesn't have cellular capabilities. So you're not gonna be able to get phone calls or text messages or any of that. Uh, so it won't completely replace Android Auto. Uh, but again, up to you. I don't think that's the intended use for most of you. So this box may not be the right choice. So finally, how about the cost? So at the time of this video on Amazon, this is the current pricing. So the CA and the Z3 are both $99 and then the Z6 is $160. But there are coupons, which there often are in the Amazon world. So right now you can get the CA01 for $80 with the coupon, the Z3 at $90 with the coupon, and the Z6 is a pretty good discount, $110 with the coupon. I will have my affiliate links in the description of this video. And if you purchase using my Amazon affiliate link, it doesn't cost you anything. So there's no additional cost to use my link. It's just a link that refers you to the product. And then I get a small commission from Amazon if you purchase then through my link. Again, it's no different. It uses your Amazon account. Uh, you can use the coupons to get the, whatever the current pricing is. Uh, but if you use my link, Amazon gives me a little referral fee to referring you to the product. So please do. It really helps this channel out. So before you set up your AI box, you must have a headset connected to the bike. 
because we're going to use the CarPlay feature of the bike to boot up the Android box. So whether you're using a helmet headset or a headset adapter, you have to have it connected as rider roll before you start the setup process of this box. So either way will work. If you're using a helmet headset, you have a microphone. So that means you can use your phone for phone calls and to get audible text messages and audible prompts. If you're using a headset adapter, you're only gonna get music from your Android experience, but you're not gonna be able to do phone calls or hear audible messages about text messages where it reads the message to you. You're not gonna get any of that because these adapters are not actual headsets with a microphone. So you're gonna need a full headset if you really want that phone capability while you're riding with your Android Auto. Okay, so I'm going with my headset adapter. I have a video on this. I'll put in the link of the description of this video if you want to check that out. So I have my headset adapter connected as rider roll. And I'm going to now connect the Anense box. So I can use its cable it came with. It comes with the USB-C to USB-C, which will work for this bike. And the cable it comes with is just fine. It's a little long. I found this cable option, which is a lot shorter, and it's a really robust cable. I really like it for using with these adapters. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to check this out. So I'm going to use this cable instead of the one it came with. I'll connect it there, USB-C, and then we'll plug it into the bike. You'll see the Anense light up with power, and then it'll start the boot process. And we can see it's starting up the smart box and it shows Android Auto on the screen. Now once it boots, it will need to calibrate for the screen size and you'll see this message on the screen. Once the Anense box starts the reboot process, you need to turn off your bike. So once the reboot starts, shut the bike off because when the box reboots, it will not reconnect to the bike. So you have to turn the bike off and then turn it back on and it'll boot and this time it'll display correctly because it's calibrated for the Harley Davidson screen. Should this box ever disconnect, so for any reason it disconnects, your headset goes away and the box disconnects, uh, it reboots itself for any reason, it will not reconnect to your bike until you pull over, shut the bike off, let it stay off for a good minute and then turn it back on to get this box to boot and reconnect. Okay, at this point you should see this screen. This is the built-in interface of the Anense box. So this is what you'll see if you just boot the box up. The next step is to pair your Android phone to the box. So not the bike, but to the box. So the first step is to launch the pairing process. They have a CarPlay icon and an Android Auto icon. Does not matter which one you click on. But if we tap it with our finger, it'll come up to this screen. This is the pairing screen, so the box is now ready to pair with your phone. But one tip, after you pair your phone, when you reboot the bike, it's always gonna boot to the box's interface. And then you're gonna have to tap that Android Auto icon to get the Android Auto to launch. My guess is your intent is to always use the Android Auto and not the built-in interface of the box. So they do provide a setting here. So if we tap on the little gear icon in the lower left corner, there's an option here to auto connection for wireless CarPlay. And you can turn that feature on. It will be off by default, but I already have it turned on. So this setting will allow the box to boot up and then immediately go into the Bluetooth pairing to connect to my Android phone. And then it'll put wireless Android Auto on the screen without having to touch the screen at all. So if we go back now that we have that turned on, we can now go to our phone. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the pairing process. So if I swipe down and I press the gear for settings, there's more than one way to do this. But this is my preferred method, at least with a Samsung phone. I'm going to go to Connected Devices, and then I'm going to go down to Android Auto. Now, you could just go to Bluetooth and pair the box at this point, and that would start up Android Auto. 
but we're gonna go to the Android Auto icon and then I'm gonna do connect a vehicle. So I'll do connect a vehicle, it says plug it in. Well, we don't have a USB-A port, so we cannot use wired Android Auto with this box. With the other boxes, you could plug the cable in at this point and have wired Android Auto. But it says down here, connect using wireless Android Auto, so we'll do that. And then it says uh, connect using Bluetooth. So again, we could have just gone to Bluetooth and paired the box, but this is my preferred method. So it says, all right, pair a vehicle. So we'll tap on pair a vehicle, and it's gonna show us all the devices it's seeing, and we're looking for the smart box. So right here we have smart box, and I think the number may vary from box to box, but we'll tap on that. And it's now gonna pair, it says, would you like to pair? I said, yep, I'll pair that. And it should detect Android Auto, and we'll see a prompt here to set up Android Auto. And there we go, it says, welcome to Android Auto, and you can tap manage to manage some of the settings, or we'll just hit continue. And my phone is now connected to the bike, and I have wireless Android Auto, and music is playing. So while in the Android Auto interface, you can actually use your hand controls. So if I hit play here, the music will start. I can turn the volume up, and I can skip the track. You can use your left hand control to move around the icons on the screen. So you just cycle through them, just kind of like with CarPlay, you have to cycle through to get to the icon you want. Now I have found that once you're on the bottom bar, you can only go through those icons, and I can't get up to the main screen. My audio controls will still work on the right side, but I can't get up to navigate with the maps. So if I hit the menu button, it will take me to the main menu of my Android phone, and then I can go to Google Maps, and then now I have Google Maps full screen, and my hand control is now controlling Google. So I can go here and I can zoom out and etc. It's very snappy. It's a great interface. I really am enjoying this box. From starting the bike from a powered off state to getting Android Auto on the screen, it's about a minute and 19 seconds. So I'd love to see that faster, but it is what it is. At least Android Auto will appear on the screen without having to touch any buttons or touch the screen at all. One other tip, if you are using one of these headset adapters and your box is not booting, so you see the power indication, but it never appears on the screen. Many of these adapters will only support data on one side of the cable connection. So at the adapter, you're gonna unplug your Anunse box and then flip that cable over and plug it back in. That should then allow the data to pass and the box should then boot for you. So Android Auto on these new touring models from Harley Davidson with the Skyline OS. This particular box, the Z3, is working really well. I do appreciate the performance of this box. It's very small, but very fast, and it's connecting very reliably each time I go for a ride. It's quite the win to have Android Auto on these new bikes. I wish Harley would just turn it on for us, or Google, or whoever's fault it is, but having Android Auto over CarPlay is quite the win if you're an Android fan. I really hope you found this information useful. And if you did, you'll go share it with someone else. If you're having any challenges with the box, reach out. Here's my email address. I'm happy to help you with it. I think this latest offering from Anense is a great choice for Android Auto on these new bikes. So I hope you're getting out and riding, and I hope you can take Android Auto with you. Thank you.